grace and praise and praise the Lord to you all once again. Definitely. We're talking about tonight the examining of me and examine me, oh Lord, and prove me. So that's what we're talking about. And we're talking about relationships. Um, because in unity, there is definitely relationship. And in this walk with Christ, we always want to have a relationship with God as we continue to walk this walk of faith. Um, so sometimes it's hard, you know, some, I hear a lot of friends like, oh, a lot of my friends personally, like, oh, it's hard to walk with Jesus. It's not hard to walk with Jesus. It's not hard to walk with God. People make it hard People because they want to do what they want to do. And they really kind of walk with this like weeble wobble of unfaith and untrustworthy. But I'm, I'm so glad and I'm so grateful to God that we're sitting amongst people and we're in a house that serves to produce kingdom. We are serving to produce kingdom. And what is in the kingdom? Jesus Christ. So let's just go ahead and dive right into it. Um, I do definitely want to say a word of prayer before I get started tonight, just so that God can continue to still flow in our words. It can still continue to flow in our brain cells that he can just allow himself to be him. We're nobody. We're just using his name for our glory. All right. So as we take you to the throne of grace, most gracious and all wise God, we just bless you. We thank you tonight. We glorify you. And God, we thank you for your word that's living. God, we thank you for your word that's giving life. God, we thank you because you're the relationship builder in our lives. God, we glorify you in this space and in this opportunity to just give you praise, God, to give you glory. And God, we eliminate all fear, all stress, and all worry. God, we thank you because you're in our mindsets. We give you praise because you're in our environments. We give you praise and glory because you have set us on a rock that is higher than I. So God, we thank you just for sitting up there upon your throne. And God, we thank you just for what you're getting ready to do in this time and in this space of youth Bible study. God, touch us. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, let's get into the word today. Uh, examine me, O oh Lord, and prove me. I'm coming out of Psalms 26 today. Um, it's going to be, we're going to be talking about pretty much David and David's life. We're taking this Actually, it's going to be out of a moment of his life. Um, in this moment of David's life, uh, he is actually in danger of evil, and some and something is actually um, going on where his he he's asking God to walk with him and walk in his life that he will not stray and he, he actually won't waver. So as we dive into it, just think of just think of moments and think of times where I don't want you to talk about where. I don't really want you to look at your part of strain, but God, I thank you for keeping me not to ever stray. I want us to look at that standpoint from that vision. While you're talking about examining yourself and you're asking God to examine you and prove you, it's a part of the unity because David, he was a man after God's own heart. So you can't talk about the heart and being one of the hearts without even being in unity with a relationship with the king, all right? So come on with me, and as we go to Psalms 26, judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my iniquity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reign and my heart, for my Loving kindness is before mine eyes and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers and I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence. So will I compass thine altar, O Lord. I have I may publish with thy voices of thanksgiving and tell all of thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwells. So he's definitely dwelling. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with 
the Bloody Mary. And those hands is mischief and their right hands is full of grease. But also for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in every place in the congregation. Will I bless the Lord? And that's reading out of Psalm 26. But as we talk about it, when he says, walk into my integrity, I have also trusted in thee and I shall not slip. David can. David right there is confident in God. Have you ever had times where you're confident? Um, and sometimes we can do this in God and then we can also do this in ourselves. Do we have our do we have confidence enough in ourselves, no matter if it's a test that we're going on and we didn't study it for. So now we feel very, very confident in going in. It has been a spelling bee sometimes um, if you're still doing those in school. But oftentimes we always talk about having confidence having the confidence. But when we talk about David and, his, and him talking to God about his confidence, having the integrity of confidence, the word vindic vindicate means to justify. The word vindicate means justify. So when he was praying and he said, vindicate him because he, he had faith in God, trusting in the Lord. So that's one right there. You have to have trust. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you guys about a little bit of different ways of having integrity in yourself to have the best integrity relationship with the king and how you can really trust God to walk out some places where you shall not slip. So that's what he was talking about. What David wanted to, no matter, it wasn't like he was challenging God, but he just wanted to say, God, I'm not challenging you, but I'm trusting. I'm trusting in you. I'm trusting in you enough to embark on a whole walk <laughs> that I don't really know too much about. I'm, I'm entrusting you on me waking up every day. I, from the very point of this first series, I was always talking about the inward parts, right? Being the inward parts. When I wake up every day, right? How can I walk with you, Jesus? And I know through confidence, your confident relationship with him. <laughs> that's how, that's how you have to have a confidence in your relationship. You have to have confidence in your walk. If you have confidence enough in yourself to breathe, that's why I had to take a moment. That breath was not for me. God, I thank you for that breath. I had confidence in knowing, Jesus, I'm not gonna die in the next minute. I have confidence enough. So there's, uni there's unity there. There's unity right there. You have to trust. Trust is a big part of unity. Walking in integrity. That's enough because you don't really know about walking in the unknown of God, right? So right now, we all know that we're sitting in a youth Bible study. This is the knowing. It's the common area, the common ground. You know, every other Wednesday we come here, we just, we pour out because we know. But it's, God operating in the unknown. That's where you have to have faith. That's where the faith has to come in. Because when you, when you are talking to a king and when you're talking to a God who's not even in the same atmosphere. So when you talk about your environment or when you look at your environment, you can't think of those things as these are just environments in my life that, oh, Maybe God wants me here, maybe he doesn't, or these are just environments that I have to go through because I'm a natural human being. No, you, you are talking with a king and when you're walking with a king, you're operating from a place of the unknown. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't really know what you got going on that day. You don't really know what God has planned for you, but you have to wake up in your morning with your mindset in prayer. You have to wake up in the morning with your mindset of saying, examine me, oh God, examine me so that I can prove myself, not to myself. God, I'm, we're living this life to live again. We're living this life for a kingdom that was produced for kings. I, I love the way First Lady said, we are workmanships. We are workmanships of the king, of the kingdom. We're workmanships of the kingdom. So you have to be, you have to prove yourself. All right, let's keep it going. Um, Cause this is getting good. Um, so yes, you're walking in integrity. Therefore, despite presence, 
which is your present difficult. You have to, you have to say, God, I shall not ever slip. I shall not ever slip, not from you. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes and I have walked in true love. I have walked in the truth. So when we talk about walking in truth, all right, we talk about the loving kindness and we're talking about David being valuable and sustaining in, of the example of meditation. He's, he's, examining, he's examining himself through the examination of the vision of God's eyes. And now he's in meditation unto the loving kindness of God. So that's another unity. What is, so the first unity, we walked in trust. Now we're getting to the loving kindness. And when we talk about loving kindness, guys, we're talking about depending upon it, that you shall find it. Each, that's what we're talking about. You, you're depending on God's loving kindness. So now I'm, I'm out of myself. God, I'm talking to you about how I can walk upright before you. And what does that look like? Your loving kindness shown towards me. Get, stop being dull, getting out of your dullness. And when I say getting out of your dullness, I mean getting out of the ways that reflects your mindset on God. I know I said I was going to pray at three o'clock. I didn't start praying until about five o'clock because it was a little tired. Don't beat yourself up right there. Okay, God, don't beat yourself up. Take, you're being examined always, right? So you have to take up the time and say, God, I thank you. And I love you because why? I might've been tired in the three o'clock hour, but God, I still can praise you. And with the same amount of love, I can show you in this three o'clock, in this five o'clock hour. So that's what I'm saying. Don't beat yourself up on the dog and flag. So being a participant of your religion, Jesus is not based off of religion, but don't be so dull and caught up in just religion. Oh, I got to do this at this time. Oh, I got to do this at this time. Being specific. Just get real with your relationship. That's all he wants us to do. Be authentic with your relationship with God. Guys, that's, a, that's it. Like When we're building up a relationship and we're trying to trust in God and we're trying to trust into a king, that's all it is. Not being so down on ourselves on the things that we might have not. We, human beings, may not have thought it was the right thing. But God is so pleased with us, guys. That's on this call. God is so pleased with us that you just want to take time just to continue to build your relationship. And for that, he's going to continue to unify your relationship, your walk with him. Oh, he's going to continue. So what is his loving kindness? It's not religion. Don't get caught up in religion. Get caught up in the relationship with the king. Get caught up in the relationship with your God. Get caught up in the relationship with Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the blood that lives on the inside of me and you. So, Giselle, what is his loving kindness? Well, Brother Aaron, let me tell you. Loving kindness is good. It's a widespread. It's pleasure. It's simple. It's eternal. It's freedom. His loving kindness. Is faithful. His loving kindness is faithful. His loving kindness is faithful. No matter how we think we may be, and I have to use that example because um, the example is God, I want to be faithful with my walk. I want to be faithful with my talk and I want to be faithful with my time. So if I'm coming to you in the a.m., and why do I say it's because it's the sixth and the ninth hour is when you should have your really alone time with God. I know that it, it's between six and nine, but if you really wake up at three and four o'clock in the morning, he really begins to download some things. At least maybe it's for me. And again, that's my relationship walk. I just want to just tell you. So that's why I keep referring to the three and the five hour, because sometimes at three o'clock, I may not... I may not even be done working and closing out my day until about 2 a.m. So I'm tired, but I, I want to stay faithful 
in my loving kindness to God. So God, I, I want to have my time where I'm with you in the early morning before I even get my day started at seven to go to work at eight. All right. So it's just like being faithful and consistent in your walk. Is that's how you continue to show. And that's really continue how God is going to continue to prove himself to you on who he is. And because he's examining your life. So the loving kindness is before in my eyes. I have, I have walked in thy truth. God, I have walked in thy truth. And when he says walking, he's speaking on the actual action. Action. What's taking place? So now he's, he's taking action. Now you have, in your lifestyle, with your walk and your relationship with God, you must take action. It's time out from just sitting and watching and, and maybe God, I want to talk to you. But no, it's time to take action. Somebody put in the notes right there, action. It's definitely time to take action. To have a relationship with God, it takes some action. I'm, I'm going to come back into the natural and then I'm going to take it back up into the spirit realm. Because in the natural, when we go for relationships and when I, even when I was going to go find my wife, it took some actions. I had to I had to go make some calls. I had to do some things. And even when I want next things now, when it comes down to new cars or homes, I have to take action. So these are things that I wanted in my lifestyle to build my relationship. Well, if I'm talking about the main source <laughs> and the main reason, the biggest relationship I want is with the, Jesus Christ. It's gonna take action. Prayer is an action. Fasting is an action. Reading, taking time to read and understand the word. It's an action. What are these actions doing? It's identifying my walk with Christ. That's what it is. It's identifying the walk. So instead of me just stumbling or just in my own way or in my own mindset, being tired in my own self because of life, I'm, I have to take action always. And I want to encourage you guys to always take action in your walk. Take action in your relationship with the Father. Take right now action. And I, again, I was talking about, we're talking about the walk here. So you're walking in truth. What is the truth? All the lies that's going on in the world, and there you could turn on the news right now. <laughs> and I'm not knocking the news. I'm not knocking the news. But what I am saying is you could turn on the news and you can see so much that's going on in our world. We're in a generation, we're in a world that is dying, that's crying out for help that's crying out for Jesus. And really, what are they wanting? They are wanting the response of people. They're looking for the wrong things. They're looking for the wrong things. They're looking for the response of people when all they had to do was just take some time and get the right response and the right action from Jesus Christ. That was That's all they had to do. So when we talk about the walk, Speaking is an action of manner of living. David knew that it was important for both the inward part of life, which is the mind and the heart, and the right action. <laughs> so what did he have to do, right? In this scripture, he wanted to show us that God, deal with the inward parts of me. Deal with the inward parts of me that takes action so I can build up our relationship. I have I have not sat with veiny people, neither will I go with the dissemblers. So God help me to stay away from the people that's in this world. When I talk about the news, there's shootings that's going on. God help me to continue to walk in this world, but not become so isolated and God not have myself just so as found of being separate that I just turn myself into the world. God wants us to stay separate because he wants a relationship. He wants our relationship to continue to go deeper in him. He wants our relationship to keep flourishing in him. He doesn't want us to isolate ourselves that we can just be like, oh, well, if the news is doing it, if they got guns, if they are shooting, let me just go out here and get a gun. Let me shoot because I have violence. No, 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 guys. He wants, he wants us to walk in loving kindness. He wants us to. So make sure that you do not get caught up 
in the in just the inward parts of your mind that the enemy likes to sometimes distract. Stay the stay with the whole inward parts of being that Jesus wants to love on you. He wants a relationship. He wants to build you. He wants to talk with you, not even now, but in the future. Sometimes as we gradually get older, we sometimes lose ourselves by being in our minds and our hearts, like he says. But sometimes those two things, because they're inside of us, are the, what the enemy comes at the fastest, if I can say it like that. They come at, they come at the enemy tries to come and attack the mindset. He tries to come at to attack the heart. Why? Because it's really set up for, like David was saying, it's set up for Jesus to be controlling the mindset. If Jesus is in your mind, there's no way that he can not control your body. If he's up there in your mind, he's going to have to control your whole entire body. Again, we're talking about action. So this heart, God, my heart, if it wasn't right towards you, I'll be going out here and I'll be bottled up and I'll be ready to kill, steal and destroy because that's what the enemy is coming to do. But I want to share with you, continue to walk with integrity with God. To, now, right guys, continue to walk with the integrity of God so that no matter what it takes, no matter, it, come hell or high water, you're walking with the king and you know for a fact that you have the confidence. You have the confidence in Jesus Christ that you can never, ever, ever get overpowered by the evildoers. You can never get overpowered by the people who's really not walking up right before God. All right, we're talking about the integrity of God. So the right action is the indeed. We also know that if our actions are evil, it is a it is vain and it takes comfort from the, our thoughts. Our thoughts sometimes will get so cloudy that we have, I'm gonna say it like this, unstableness in our walk. And I don't want us as kingdom builders and as kingdom and as kingdom producers of Jesus Christ, I don't want us to get comfortable in our walk that we just have the inward mindset to have stagnant. And even if it does, having the ability to come back to and saying, Jesus, I, entr I trust you with my life. I'm trusting you with my walk. I'm trusting you with my mind and I'm trusting you with my heart. So God, I know that you can get me from whatever is going on. And I would just wanna encourage you right there that no matter what comes your way and because we're getting ready to talk about it, no matter what comes your way, you have the power, you have the authority within your tongue to declare life. You are everything that God already made. That's why here in, in David's walk and his journey and his lifestyle, he wanted to really have God trust him with something. And what was that? That was his life. He knew he was, he wanted to walk upright no matter what came his way, he wanted to, he wanted to know that God was never gonna leave him nor forsake him. If actions speak louder than words, they may well speak louder than your thoughts. I wanna let you know that right here, you should never ever have your actions speak louder than your words. And be careful and be mindful with our relationship with God and our relationship with our walk that our actions don't speak louder than our words. And what do I mean by that? Let me explain something. That you say and you love God, you're saying that you do everything for God, but at the same given time, you're putting on thoughts of the world. You're putting on actions of the world because of the environment that you're in. I wanna help us tonight and say, and say, let's not get caught up in those. Let's refrain from that. Let's stay dwelling in Jesus. Let's, let's leave the vainy peoples alone. In verse five, he says, I have 
hated the congregation of evildoers. Get away from those evildoers. Stay away from the evildoers. And we, we all know what they are. We all, we all can see them in the spiritual and the natural. We can see them. Just stay away from the evildoers because God wants to walk with you. He doesn't, he doesn't want you to walk in wickedness. He said, I will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands. Let's talk about washing of the hands in innocence. So I will, so I, so will I compass thine altar. But hey, when he says build your altar, he means like build it anywhere. And I want to tell you, we're talking about a relationship with God. Now let's talk about this altar. The altar, I build my own altar sometimes this wonderful blue chair that sits right here in this corner i just i put a sheet around me while i get in my on my knees and i begin to pray sometimes i pray in my closet um just to not isolate myself but get away from my children when it's time to pray and and it's really because i want to separate myself from all distractions and i want to tell you sometimes you have to separate yourself if you see distraction coming up in the world if you just see things you have to you must separate yourself you have to, you have to separate yourself to say, God, what are you saying to me right now? Who do you want me to hear right now? What, is, what are you saying to me even in this moment? So I, I sit with you, oh God, but I want to know, how do you think about me? What do you think about me? David had the mind that people, he was around, chose him to associate I'm pretty certain, like David, David was probably associated with a lot of people, but, but by being upright before God, he had to, I know, like, it doesn't say it in the scripture, but I know he had to, like, stay, stay so rooted, rooted and grounded, because by him being so high and up, there was probably people pulling at him in all different areas, all different places because we're even right now where we're, he's talking about a space and time of his life where he was in danger so he, he's definitely so right now he's he's have to have the confidence that he will not slip none whatsoever even even if there's things in his path like guys we, we go outside my like friends right now with the kids outside playing they're being innocent and in all they're being but who can i who is telling them that they're doing the right things right now they're outside playing in innocence, but they're running around. Is that what you should be? No, you shouldn't be running around just doing whatever you want. Have a destination of where you're going. Where's your destination? The kingdom. Jesus, to sit where Jesus is sitting. That's what that's where our destination is. So we can't be bottled up trying to just sit amongst the crowds because they're our friends. We can't get bottled up sitting among the crowd just because we're cool with them and they that you know they're you we can't get caught slipping i don't want you to get caught slipping i don't want you to get caught slipping in your inward mind so just being associated with life and not allowing life to control you you have to take control of your life why because jesus already gave you the control he, he been gave you the control he just allowed you through the holy ghost and he also allowed you through baptismal to have inward power, inward power to stay away from the evildoers, to stay away from the wickedness. As we keep on reading, I'm in verse seven, that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving. All right, here we go. We're talking about a unity. We're talking about a unity. We got to give thanks, guys. Don't in everything give thanks, thanksgiving, and tell all that thy wondrous works. And you, so you must give thanks and you must tell. You must tell what Jesus is doing. You have to give thanks. You have to give thanks because God is more than just good. Jesus is living. Jesus is truly, truly living. So you have to give thanks. You can't, as you mature up in God, and as you grow older from the babe stage into maturity life, into adulthood, into priesthood, you have to always have the confidence, have the confidence. And no matter what 
comes your way, no matter what people say. Like right now, we're living in a generation world where they don't really believe that Jesus is real and they don't really believe that God is God. And they don't really believe that it takes a lot to just get into his presence. It may not take a lot to get into his presence, but I'm gonna take you back. When those evildoers come your way and they wanna tempt you, just like, they, just like the devil tempted Jesus on the mountaintop, you have to have the confidence, you have to have the sustainability, you have to have the breastplate of righteousness to say, God, I am yours. Jesus, I walk upright before you. Jesus, I shall never leave you. Jesus, you should always continue to walk with me. Take my hand and have compassion on me. So you have to give thanks and you have to remind yourself. I'm gonna tell you a quick story because I have to honor God because I must give thanks. Yes, we're talking about David's lifestyle when, we're, when he was in danger or evil and the association. But let me talk about uh, a time in my life for a moment where my brother passed away the month of my graduation, right? And I, and I tell this story quite often because at that time and at that moment, I remember it was June 20, and it, that's funny. <laughs> oh God, I thank you for healing. Cause oh God, I just thank you. And I thank you for your power. I thank you for your divine destiny. It was June 28th when my brother passed away and it's coming up again because his anniversary date is coming up. I literally just got done graduating high school and um, I graduated on June 2nd, 2013. My brother passed away June 28th of 20. Mm -hmm. 13. And when I remember myself being at that time, I thank you, Jesus. God, I glorify you even in the midst. Because I remember at that time where I could have just isolated myself. And my brothers was out, and you know, we had a party, and you know, we had, and they were drinking, they were smoking, they were doing all their, their things. But at that time, they asked me, they said, Josh, did you want to impartake? And I said, I can't. There's mm -hmm. something in me that has to go upstairs and give God praise. Huh. There's something in me that has to go give God honor. I cannot do, I can't really do those things. Like I could have, like, huh. it's so easy, guys. Huh. Because I praise God. And I'm praising God because of the simple fact that it was so easy for me because they're my brothers. It's so easy for me to just walk with the evildoers, you know? But at that same given time, I was like, Jesus, I'm going to take this moment out because this man, yes, he might have lost his life in a car accident, but he was saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh, yeah. And this man was baptized in Jesus' name. So God, if you're gonna take a life that really didn't, he never did have sex in his life. <laughs> My little brother, he never did. So if you're gonna take this virgin baby, I can't sit up here and hang with my family and do things that's gonna cause me to separate my relationship from you. Oh, I'm running after the king. So even in the midst of it all, I wanna tell you guys that at a moment and at a given time, God doesn't want you to isolate yourself. He doesn't want you to get into a place of disparity and of so much darkness that you just forget about who he is. Jesus wants to walk with you in confidence. So at that moment, I could not, I had to go upstairs and I had to give God praise. So then as I begin to just say, God, I thank you and I praise you just for a life. <laughs> We're talking about life. Jesus, you are the living water. You're the life that I breathe. You're the life and the air that makes us. And if you took this precious life, God, I thank you. I thank you because he stayed here for 16 long years. So God, I, what am I doing? I'm now publicly opening up my mouth with my vocal cords. Like he said in, the, in verse seven, I'm vocalizing that God, you shall get the glory, you shall get the honor, and you shall get the praise, no matter what. Guys, no matter what comes in your life, distraction can, should never get you so blinded that you forget who the king is. Oh God, don't never get distracted 
that you forget who the king is. Continue, continue to open up your mouth and vocalize your thanksgiving. Tell, tell it, tell what God has done for you. And so even in the midst of, and as I'm telling my story, my brother, he some, after that, you know, they was, after they were all come, they were all downstairs. I came downstairs after prayer, after I got out of prayer with God. And they're like, Josh, you're really taking this hard. And I'm like, cause you know, yes, he was my little brother, but you know what? We serve God together. <laughs> so when I, I would say, when I got into prayer, it was like, Lord, I thank you because we had the opportunity to serve. We had the opportunity to serve the King into the, this camp, at the camp that we was going to, we, we were serving Jesus. That's who I'm talking about. We were serving Jesus at the church camp we was going to. So we, we were doing things. So I had to give thanks and I had to praise God for the wonder of work. Was it so wonderful at that time? No, I was dealing with a death, y'all. I was dealing with a death. But I could tell you who was the one that was in charge, Jesus. And not only that, he, he knew exactly how I felt. And as soon as I got in prayer, the heavy burden that I had on me, walking up the steps, it was lifted. So when you talk about his wonderful work, he just begins to lift up all your burdens. And that's how he comes into unity to more with you. Jesus he begins to walk with you more because he begins to hear the thanksgiving that's coming out of your mouth. It's an inward part, guys. It's an inward part. He had to build the altar. I had to build my altar. No matter where we were at, we was at my brother's house. Build your altar. No matter if you're at school, just take a moment and you can say this in your mind, God, I repent and God, I thank you because I don't know what's going on with any of my friends right now, because right now they're going and they're showing signs that are not of you. But God, I know that you're able and you're more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly and above all we can ask or think. So God, I need you to help them and control them. And when I say that, yes, yes, he will listen, yes. And that is his wondrous works, that he is all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all, he's dwelling. He's dwelling where? On the inside of you. So never discount yourself. Never discount yourself. Never discount what's in your mouth. And definitely continue to lift up your voice of gratitude and gratefulness. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thine house. Whose house? His house. The Lord's house. Jesus's house. I have loved your inhabitation. And the place where thine honor dwells. God, I thank you for honoring. I thank you for honoring. I, I thank you for honoring the altar. I thank you for honoring your habitat. For David, it was like a, a right walk with God was more than just a, doing, just a walk of doing evil. It, he is more simpler and yet deep in love with God as his personal savior he's his personal savior i want to encourage us guys god is your personal savior he saves you from the habitations of your mind the habitations of isolation or feeling like you're isolated when i say like that i mean i you're being alone i might not have understood when my brother died of why i had to go give god praise and god had to go give god honor and i had to my isolate myself from what my brothers was doing but God, 2013, I would never have guessed I would be here on the 26th, 20, on June 22nd, having to minister. God will keep you. God will keep you. Why? Because he is so deeply in love with you. He wants, that's unity. He is a keeper. He is the keeper. He, he will keep you. He will keep you in his own perfect peace. He will keep you in his own perfect will. And definitely, he loves the tabernacle because it is a place of restoration. It represents the house of God. What is this habitation? It's the house of God. It's a place where God's glory reigns. His glory shall always be living. So in the temple, guys, we are we're coming into a habitation of glory. Glory and honor shall forever live in your mouth. Honor. 
honor, honor, give honor where honor is due. I must honor God <laughs> because he's in this place filled, filled with glory and his obedience cannot sustain without the sweatness of God's presence and his glory. So what I'm not saying guys, obedience, obedience unto God's voice. Listen to God's voice. That was me. That was my story. I had to listen to God's voice. No, no, my brothers, I cannot party with you. I must be obedient in this dying situation. Why? Because God is called. He, God said, Josh, no, nah, you can't. Your pain, <laughs> your pain, it, it weighs too much for you to carry. You got to go release it. No, I, no, no, no. I can't release it with substance. I can't release it with doing things. I can't release it with just things that are great for me. I must go humble myself, get in prayer, get spend time with the Father that I, I was in a place of pain and brokenness. And I was in a place where I didn't think healing could really take place. But I'm telling you guys, God is a healer. Not only is a keeper, we already talked about trusting him. These are all things that I had to just entrust him in my personal walk. I just want to encourage us that in your personal walk, you must Stay sustained in God. You must, you must stay, remain, you must stay humble enough and you must be obedient to God. Why? Because God loves you. He loves the obedient. It's obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice. God, I can't sacrifice my life. <laughs> I don't want to die in the place of, I, just me personally, I always told this thing, and, and this is just me. I just always told God, I want to, you know, sometimes we go through school and, you know, we graduate, we be like, yeah, I kind of like barely made it. I graduated and I just like, I hit it, but I could have did so much more. I don't want to go to heaven on, a, I could have done more. I don't want to, I don't want to go to heaven on a, I, I could have done more. God, what would you want to do more? No, God, I want everything. I want everything that you got for me right now. I want everything that you desire for me right now. God, I don't want to have. I don't want to miss you in no season. Even if you're trying to show something. Because <laughs> why? Even in Jesus' death. It might have been a bad situation. His, his mom might have been sad. But in three days, y'all, Jesus rose with all power. He rose with all glory. He just wanted us to see that there might be some dying things in your life, but if you just wait and bear the weight a little bit longer, there's so much joy and glorious that comes after that pain. So what are we doing? We're going to gather not my soul. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men and those in whose hands is mischief. And, and they're right hand is full of brides. But as for me, I will walk in my integrity. What am I saying? I will walk in mine integrity. God, you, we're learning each and every last day as we walk older. We are dying of ourselves. I'm gonna put my name in the atmosphere. Joshua, you are dying within yourself to embark on God's integrity. You and put you implementing Jesus's name in front of yours. So Jesus, I want you to be the integrity walker. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. So Jesus, my foot, my foot standeth in every place. In the congregations, I will bless you, Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will bless you, Lord. I will bless you no matter what it looks like, no matter what it takes. I want you to stay encouraged that even in this unity walk, you have so much integrity. And what is integrity? I had to do some research. Ha! This is why it's so good to me tonight. Integrity, the meaning is honestly. The meaning is honest. That's your integrity. What is the second word of integrity? Unity. 
I want to walk in unity, oh God, with you. I want to walk in unity in every, in every environment I walk into. God, I want you to walk with me. God, in every place I stand, I want you to walk upright before me. I want to trust you, Jesus, that I might walk into some places. I might walk into some destinations that you may not be. But because I'm carrying the weight and I'm carrying the glory of God. Why? Because he's embarking in me and you. At the last session, I talked about the unity being right above the baptism pool and how you had to die out to come back up in confidence. Tonight, we're talking about confidence and having to walk in confidence in your integrity. And that's in walking in unity with Jesus Christ. Walking in unity with Jesus Christ. And just like in this word, David, David was in a place where his divine kindness and his divine faithfulness had to be abstained, had to be. And his life would ever remain faithful unto God. And as I'm ending off this and with my closing, no matter what your relationship is, no matter what your relationship is, please, please have it the strongest relationship with God and you should never, ever change. So look into yourself. God, examine my relationship. God, examine our relationship with you. And God, we want everything that you, you want out of us. We want everything that you want to show us. Everything that's in our mindset that has all in power. God, we thirst after you. We thirst after your righteousness. And why? Because you're in habitation of your house. I just want to dwell in. Saints, God wants you to dwell. <laughs> and dwell right in this house in glory. In glory. And, and because we're our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on heaven as it is in earth. So just make sure you continue to pour down, pull down heaven onto your earth. No matter what you go through, no matter what you're walking in, your relationship and your integrity, he will always prove himself by examining you. Because God, I thank you for examining me. And God, I thank you because my walk is right with you. And I shall never, ever waver because I'm giving you glory. I'm giving you praise and I'm giving you thanks. And even right now, I want to end with this, guys. And I'm going to pass it back up to our admin. That no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Trust the Lord with on your heart, mind, body, and soul. And walk with him. Walk up right before him. And he will never, ever leave you nor forsake you. I want you to get the message out of tonight, Psalms 26, that David had to go through some things and he still, and he had, even though he was a man after God's own heart, he was still gathered around sinners. He was still gathered around some people that felt shameful and felt mm -hmm. like they could not make it. But I want to tell you that he asked the Lord to never allow him to walk astray. And he wanted him to just examine him. And while he was examining him, he wanted to be proof that God was reigning with him in his heart. And what that mean? He was living with him forever. God, I want to know that I'm living with you forever in unity. So in your integrity walk, you have been united with the Father, and that's your God and your King. I, I give God praise and I give God honor for what, who he is. And I thank you just for allowing me to serve one more time. Remember your relationship with God is far more better than life itself because Jesus is living. And where is he living? Right within your heart. That's why unity is how we love. Aaron, I'm passing the call to you. Amen, amen. Thank you very much, Jolly, for tonight. Awesome Bible class, sir. Um, you said a lot of great stuff, man. And I, I just appreciate, um, your labor of love, man. Um, you, you, you know, 
I, I can't really add on to it. You kind of already did your thing. Um, but, you know, it just kind of reminded me when you were talking about when you went upstairs to give God glory. Um, it reminded me of uh, when Jeff, when Jeff uh, McCoy, when he passed away, he went to our church. Um, when he, he, he passed away at the age of about 31, about 31 years old, he passed away um, some years back. And I remember the last day he was alive, um, we went to go visit him and he was in a lot of pain in the hospital. Um, and he was in so much pain that he, he just couldn't sit still and he, he could not really talk much. Um, but we could hear him mumbling Jesus. And he 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 was he, he was in pain, but he was still, we saw that he was also praising God at the same time in the midst of his pain. And it's just from that moment on, you know how some people in the Bible they get they're known for something when they pass away. Um, when you think about um uh when in Hebrews 11, when they were talking about the, the hall of fame, the hall, your hall of faith, if you will. Um, and they were naming off people and situations, people who've gone through stuff. If I was to give Jeff something, uh, a name, if you will, I would say Jeff went out literally praising God because that was the night he passed. And he literally left this earth giving God as much of a praise as he possibly could into his last breath. And so it's just, we owe God a praise no matter the situation because he still reigns on the throne. You know, Jala, when you were talking about your brother was, um, he gave, he already gave, he already gave his life to Christ. So it's like, him passing away was nothing but a vehicle to bring him literally eternally in the presence of God. Y'all, y'all, we, uh, and I'm about to close here, but we are literally just passing by this earth. We are not, we are not permanent, you know, attendance. We, we don't, we don't permanently stay. We're literally passing this earth to move on. Where you move on to, it is your choice. But we are literally giving, God's giving us the choice to unite with him for eternity. We are not asked to praise. We are, in the Bible, we are commanded. And it says, let everything that hath breath. That means people who are evildoers, people who are who have a relationship with God, people who don't. That this is the crack out of breath. This is every everything that's breathing. I have a little Boston Terrier dog. You know, animals praise God by functioning as themselves because He made them that way. So let everything that have breath praise ye the lord my my own brother he passed away my own brother also he passed away and as he was passing he was in a place of repentance himself so it's like i'm at the point where i'm like god allow him to meet me at the gate when it's my time to go because we, we're living to live again we're going to see these people again y'all we just got to keep living for God. And when we pass, we'll see our God. We will see our God face to face. But we will also see the loved ones that passed along the way. Jesus said this one last thing, and I, and I'm, I promise I'm about to pray us out. Jesus said, you believe, and I'm not, trying to quote here i'm kind of trying to give you just like a like a little rundown he said you believe because you see me but blessed are they which that don't see me yet believe 
we are blessed, y'all. Even though we may not have never seen Jesus, we have never seen Jesus. But we know he's real. And we are blessed because we believe and we didn't even have to see him in his body. But we're going to see him. All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. I appreciate y'all for coming out. Thank you again, Jolly, for your labor of love, sir. Father I, Father, I thank you, Lord God, for this Bible study. I thank you, Lord God, for Jolly's labor of love. I pray, Father, that there was something that he said um, that blesses whoever that hears, even if it's just a snippet or even the whole Bible study, Lord God. We just pray, Father, that you have your way. We thank you for where you have us right now. We thank you, Lord God, uh, for where you're taking us. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise. In Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Love y'all. Thank y'all. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Bless you.